Do a listing of all our sins Our time spent wasted after dark I've been throwing up on policemen Yelling at my girlfriend's door to let me in Broadway in New York is not Cause we got Mexicans with crowbars Black kids jumping on cars White trash just blowing in the wind Got kids drinking whiskey Getting tickets when they go pee-pee Outside on the neighbor's door Well, I guess that's one place no man's gone before And Captain Steve yells no But Tommy Lang just laughing on the radio Instigating our sins There's no slack when the cops bust through your door Oh, come to my promotion, you gonna be your star You get a horn of golf, your name's too long Live in a trailer park, gonna play your song Say yes sir, I was come right in Did you know that I'm Hitler's cousin? Cause that'll really impress them a lot But then again, maybe not, but You make the Hall of Fame That's a lock, so sell your job Beat your wife, stop driving drunk and run red lights Green leaf substance, that's all right Just not too much, or you can't fight No, but for now, the fighting's done Cause police reports are on Well, that was a cluster <laughs> Yeah <laughs> If you uh, wondered why it went away, was there and then went away and then came back, I uh, I started it before the song was over, and we didn't want to get dinged for a copyright violation on the Hall of Fame show. Yeah. So I had to stop it and delete it and restart yeah, it. And then I went to... You asked me why. He's yeah. like, I can't find it. I like, I just hit start like two seconds earlier. Okay, but yeah, but uh, it didn't... I had to go to live on this. I don't know. YouTube changes. Well, I'm getting it okay in here. I got it okay here. The Weasel Fest time machine is in there. Yeah. Yeah, this is the Police Reports Hall of Fame for 2022, a Christmas tradition. Yeah, it is a Festivus tradition. Yeah, that's right. Today is it's a, Festivus. Airing it's of Festivus. grievances right here, buddy. we got a big pile of them. <laughs> lots of grievances. Oh, lots of grievances. Well, because this Feats is... Feats of the, strength, usually involving alcohol. Yes. This is, uh, because this is the Police Reports Hall of Fame. Boy, am I tired. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I should have stayed up and watched that last FBI episode. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but anyway, <laughs> I've been here all night. <laughs> uh, because it is the Police Reports Hall of Fame show, uh, we will be playing for $250. Ooh, okay. Who do we have on the line? One of the mics, Steve. I also have a pile of grievances if you wanted to know. Yeah, well, I don't really care about How are the roads in Cedar Rapids? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not bad. Oh, okay. Not bad. So you, so you get, you know, county and then, you know. That's where we are, so it, yeah. Yeah. Well, there have been some fender benders in Cedar Rapids. Understood. Because, yeah, because yeah, of understood. the ice. Because people will go out anyway. You can tell them not to. Yeah. That's why it's always was stupid to me. The disc jockeys say, drive carefully. Yeah. Why? They're going to do what they're going to do. Yeah. You're making yourself hey, responsible. I was going to get hammered and drive home on New Year's, but that DJ said don't. <laughs> yeah. I guess I won't now. I guess I'll listen to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, give him his choices. Sure, they are Broadway, Lakeside, Cross Park, Town and Campus, Regency, Baculus, Modern Manor, all other trailer parks, South Johnson, Pheasant Ridge, Boston Way, Taylor Drive, and the Iowa Lodge. Where do you think it's going to land? Manor. Pardon? Modern Manor, please. It's a Hall of Fame show. We should be better than this. I know, but we're not. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is hard for us. Yeah. I'm embarrassed to be here right now. 
Not just that the guy from Peru had to dig me out. You have landed on Cross Park. Ah, uh, poor. Poor Mike. Yeah, well, we tried. We tried to give him a chance. And... Yeah. Okay. Usually I'll bribe somebody and say, well, I'll give you $50. To... I've yeah, just... I forgot it used to do that. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, but I've been here overnight, all alone. All by myself with my friends from uh, the FBI TV show. And, yeah. And then uh, you got stuck this morning. Twice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Once I was able to dig myself out, the second time, crew needed to help me. <laughs> Hello. I'll settle for the 50, Steve. No, too late. That's, that's too late, Mike. That's uh, very sad. Yeah. Very sad for you. It is. <laughs> All right, well, let's get started, and I don't know why this is here. Let me look real quick, because this says April, and I know our first one was it in April. Well, maybe it was. Did we not have a Hall of Fame until April? Why would we not have a Hall of Fame until April? I don't know. I'm going to hold these aside, because, yeah, I, I dug two pages down, and we're on December 24th of last year. Okay. The day after our Hall of Fame show last year, 1.45 a.m., at 1100 Arthur Street. That's your town and campus apartment. Apartment F2. Complainant's sister just showed up at the door naked, being aggressive. <laughs> oh, that ain't good. No. <laughs> Any other woman but your sister, you know, yeah. maybe it's interesting. Yeah, but... but it's just not your sister. She was naked, Dad. Yeah. Is he up? I, you should be. It's Hall Is of Fame. watching the uh, oh, hold on. High Chaparral Hall I, of Fame I, show. I, I'm getting a call. <laughs> Let's see what's going on. Hello. Your favorite Burger King slogan? Hold the nipples, hold the letters. Great big knockers, don't upset it. There we go. And we are off. Yeah, take him off, buddy. Yeah, I'm on the Wi-Fi. I better take him off yeah, the Wi-Fi. Off the Wi-Fi. And it was quiet for some reason, too. The new, I don't like the new phones that tell you, oh, it's too, your volume's too loud. We're going to reset it down lower. I don't, yeah. No, I have no hearing. I've been, I've been rock radio for 20 years. I want to, I've cranked. I know, mine does. But, and it gives you that warning when you're, like, using it for too long. Like, oh, you extended l listening at this volume. Yeah, I'm sick of being told what to do by the uh, phone, by the machine. Yeah. I am raging against the you machine. You are raging against the machine right now. Yeah, right now. Uh, January 1st, New Year's Day, 6.54 a.m., 817 East Iowa Avenue. Mail outside. They let him because it was cold. They let him in because it was cold. He passed out and peed in the house, and they kicked him out. He's now standing outside and refusing to leave. Why wouldn't you let a drunk guy in your house at 6 in the morning on New Year's Day? Yeah, we could possibly. Well, we found out what could go wrong. <laughs> he pees in your living room. He knows where you're sleeping. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hello. His favorite movie star, Tommy P. Jones. January 3rd, 101 p.m. at 1100 Arthur Street. That's your town and campus apartment. Apartment N2. Complainant thinks that his lady is getting bitten up by bugs. <laughs> thinks that they are in her skin. <laughs> That's his lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boy, I'd like to sleep with her. <laughs> yes. Depends on the bugs, I guess. Yeah. Hello. Favorite Tarzan actor? Buster Krabs. It could be a very long show if he's doing that for every one of these. <laughs> Dang, yeah. <laughs> could be here till noon. Uh, January 8th, 1.45 p.m. at 2502 Mossy Glen Court. Sister came over and threw a bunch of stuff around. Also hit a car. Earlier at a sister's house, she chased the complainant with a bottle outside while naked. He's busy. A lot of nudity. I know it. I don't it's, it's cold. I don't think that's the same lady. <laughs> Different naked lady. Yeah. Why don't I ever see this? What do you mean? Nudity. I never see. Do you nudity. want to see nudity? Well, sh well I guess. Wouldn't you want to see nudity? Well, it depends who's naked. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like around the office? No. 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 On my computer? Yeah. Yeah. My phone. Or out, out, in, out in the, you know, driving around. And yeah. there's a uh, hot nudity. Hello. Hello. Maybe she works at a nipple and dime store. 
He's prepared. Why didn't you just have him come in? Well, we tried the walkie-talkie thing. <laughs> yeah, that's One of the many failed experiments of 2022. That <laughs> cost me 43 40, Well, they're still in the newsroom if we need them for something. <laughs> I could have taken it in my car and just done walkie-talkie from the car at the end of the lane. If I'd thought ahead. Hello. Mm-hmm. Her favorite food, beef and noodles. What? Hall of Fame. We have a high standard Come here. Come on, Bill. Yeah, Bill. It's a Hall of Fame show. This is going down uh, prosperity or whatever. Yeah, it's being recorded. This is being recorded. Yeah. Without music. What if that, uh, so we can't that have daughter a copyright, my friend from high school is watching story. this and hears that? Yeah. She's never going to listen to the police reports again. <laughs> we will have ruined a young mind. Sad. Uh, our first official arrest of the Hall of Fame today. Robert Leroy Marshall, 307 Northwest Water Street in Adams, Minnesota. Charged with second-degree harassment, 1410 Lower Muscatine Road at 6.54 p.m. on January 17th. The defendant told the victim he was going to kick his ass. This put the victim in fear for his safety. Very simple. Yeah. I think we put it in because it was just so simple. He's going to kick your ass. Yeah, he's going to kick your ass. Oh, yeah, because we determined that you got banned from Facebook for saying you're going to kick Mace's ass. And here we found out it's an actual crime. Yeah, but I really wanted to kick his kick, ass. Kick his ass. One year in jail. Yeah. Wow. Just for saying you're going to kick somebody's ass. Yeah. I still would like to kick Mace's ass. I know you would. I don't know if he's up yet. Uh, January 23rd, 1.41 p.m., 25.54, Sylvan Glenn Court. Uh, X stole her phone. Doesn't know his real name, only what he goes by on Facebook. Well, that's a good relationship. <laughs> yeah. I've been dating this guy for a while. I only know his Facebook name. That's <laughs> all. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye to your phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get yeah. that back. Uh, January 23rd, 1.46 p.m. at 12.59 Shannon Drive, apartment 104. Chronic constipation. It's a great Katie Lang song. Oh, I love that song. <laughs> Chronic I'd sing it, but we'll get a copyright. Uh, oh, yeah, that's yeah. a good point. We can't yeah. do that. Yeah. Sorry. January 25th, 3.43 p.m. at 44.35 Melrose Avenue, apartment number three. Pillow was moved in the middle of the night. Possible mental health issue wants extra patrol. They just broke into your apartment to move the pillow. <laughs> just to move your pillow. Yeah, it might be a mental health issue. <laughs> Maybe. 103 p.m. on January 26th, 1720 Waterfront Drive. That's the Waterfront IV. Transient mail wrapped up in trash bags and yelling in the restaurants. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's a flaw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you and me both, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> January 28th, 824 p.m. at 923 East College Street, apartment number three. A vehicle drove into her window. No description. Well, it's... <laughs> I would think it's, it's a vehicle that's... That's in your window in your right window, now. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to look. I, I mean... <laughs> Drove into your window. Uh, February 5th, 544 AM, 2220 Davis Street. Female stated she's tried to call the crisis line all day, but they kept saying, call back in 15 minutes if you're suicidal. Wow. <laughs> she's not suicidal. <laughs> just feels a little down. <laughs> hey, call back. Hey, can, yeah, could you? <laughs> We're really busy here. <laughs> That's not good. No. No. That's why it's a Hall of Famer. <laughs> Uh Uh-oh, this is going to be inappropriate. (laughs) Hello? One time I called the incontinent hotline and they said, can you hold, please? That could have gone well with the constipation one earlier, too. Yeah, really. I thought he was just going to call and say no S (laughs) for the constipation one. Yeah. That's a joke we tell around the Langenberg family. Don't second guess him. No. He's creating. Yeah. He's an artist. No fake Ackerman calls yet. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe you made him mad. Hello. He probably did. That guy with the constipation problem, you know what his favorite Gordon Lightfoot song is? No. The rectum of the 
Edmund Fitzgerald. <laughs> He's not used to this volume of work. <laughs> yeah. It's a little hard for him. He's a little workload issue there. <laughs> it's a good line. Yeah. <laughs> February 11th, 5.45 a.m. at 123 East Market Street, Gloria Day Lutheran Church. Ten-minute time delay in the alleyway between Casey's and this location, but on Dubuque Street. Complainant saw a white male in a robe masturbating. That's actually near where the one guy was before, from a few years ago. Yeah. Right there along, uh, like, Market and uh, yeah, tapping, Dubuque. Uh, yeah. <laughs> tapping Tim. Could be. Hello? Got a twofer. Well, don't that beat all? And you can clearly see this guy's nuts. I think you could have spaced those out. We may have more masturbation Yeah, today. yeah. Don't use them all up. Yeah. It's a marathon, not a sprint. February 14th, Valentine's Day. 9.32 a.m. Romance is in the air. Uh, 238 Stevens Drive. Dark green Jeep Brangler type vehicle. Driver appeared to be impaired. Smelled of alcohol. Slurred speech. Employee was sent home and told to get an Uber, but took off in his personal vehicle instead. That was at Prelude, by the way. Where the employee was sent home for being drunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I probably I didn't know that I should have read the prelude part first, but still, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, really. Yeah. Uh, February twenty first, two o nine p.m., two o one South Clinton Street, Hills Bank. Intoxicated male with a walker and his pants down, walking across the street near the bank. See, Dad, yeah. this. This is why you don't use them all at once. Yeah, you can't use them all at once. There he goes again. Hello. We can clearly see this guy's nuts. Thank you. This is alternate them. Yeah. For example, Clint DeAnthony Miller, 711 Savannah Drive in North Liberty, charged with indecent exposure, uh, North Riverside Drive on the University of Iowa campus, February 21st, 8.50 p.m. Defendant was seen by the victim with his genitals out, masturbating. Defendant was in an empty parking lot with the victim about 10 to 15 feet away. Defendant had his phone out while masturbating and staring at the victim. Defendant was seen on camera following the victim. Defendant wearing the same clothing seen on camera. Victim confirmed the identity with a photograph taken by an officer. Hello? This guy's favorite singing group? Foreskin Candy. I like the term singing group. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is good stuff. I'm gonna move down here. Uh, February twenty second, two forty one p.m. at one. Uh, I'll go ahead and take this one. Hello. His favorite singer, Weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> Glad Dog takes the time out of his busy schedule for that. <laughs> I assume that was Dog. I thought it was Dog. I don't know. I don't either. Good call, though. All right. 2.41 p.m. on February 22nd, 1012 North Summit Street. White puppy, half sled dog, half boxer. Black collar goes by Osama, responds, <laughs> but he responds to Morley. <laughs> if I wanted to. Name your dog Osama. Osama. <laughs> <laughs> but, he, but he responds but to Morley. To Morley. Yeah, even, even the dog doesn't want to be named Osama. No. <laughs> the dog even knows. That's not good. Thomas Allen Armstrong, 429 Southgate Avenue. That's at Shelter House. Charged with public intoxication. 201 South Clinton Street. Uh, this happening February 22nd at 1 p.m. The defendant was called in, in multiple uh, multiple times for screaming and exposing himself. Defendant admitted to having a little to drink and had opened vodka bottles in his belongings. Well, if there's multiple bottles, it ain't a little. Yeah. The defendant smelled strongly of alcohol, was located inside the old Capitol Mall yelling loudly. The reporting party said the defendant had been sitting in public with his pants in his hand. I'm sorry, his penis in his hand. Defendant was arrested for public intox, refused a PBT, has multiple previous public intox convictions. Hello? His favorite uh, poker game? You ready for this? Yeah, we're ready for it. <laughs> That's a scrotum. 
<laughs> are you ready for where? Yes. What else are we ready for? Yeah, what do you want? Where yeah, do you, we're not ready to do like a... What do you think we are? A breakdown of the Iowa basketball team's loss the other day. We're not prepared for that. <coughs> All we are is prepared for your jokes and the other callers. Yeah. I'm glad I made it in today. This wouldn't have worked over the remote no. equipment. No, 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 no. Although I think you would have gotten I stayed right. overnight for this. You did. He did. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. I appreciate this uh, call-in show this morning. I want to nominate Gene Langenberg and thank him for calling in. He had such a flavor to this show that's unequaled by anyone else. Gene, thank you for all you've done last year. You'll never run out of material. And Steve, thank you for doing this this morning. This, this is, is absolutely same great. Yeah, that's really not. He's yeah. probably done these jokes before the first time we read these. <laughs> yeah. But thank you, Bill. <laughs> but you thank, thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys very much. My dad appreciates it. Yeah. <laughs> He'll never run out of material because it's the same material. Yes. <laughs> it has been for about 40 years. <laughs> when I got here, there were still Clinton jokes. <laughs> No, we had, yeah, when you got here. When I got here, yeah. When I got 2005. here. 2005. When I got here, it was uh, Johnson and uh, Nixon jokes. <laughs> He'd get like these emails. Remember people would circulate jokes in emails? Yeah. And he'd just print them up and just save them and call Anthony and you guys. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, was, I said, Gene, you know your son's on the uh, other station. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have I really been here 17 years? Yeah. Wow. That's a long time. Yeah, 28. Yeah. 29. It's going to be 29. Jesus. February 24th, 11.36 a.m. At the old Capital Town Center, 201 South Clinton Street. White male, 300 pounds, naked in the men's room, talking to himself. Yeah. Uh, he's let himself, you know. Probably tell him, so, hey, lose weight. Yeah. I don't blame him. This is going to get old. really old. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> we can clearly see this guy's nuts. I don't know that you can. No. No, you, we don't know. Because 300 pounds. Stomach. I don't know. No, I don't think you can, Gene. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't think that one through. <laughs> oh, Jesus. This is going to Hello. This is gonna well, I guess you could say it's all in the bag, huh? <laughs> this is going to drive me. Oh, up. yeah. This is... <laughs> February 25th, 241 p.m., 125 South Dubuque Street, Brothers Bar and Grill. Transient female drawing a male anatomy on the windows with lotion. A white female buzz cut. <laughs> Khaki Carhartt. Yeah. Like a penis in lotion. Yeah. I hope it's lotion. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hold on. The speakerphone didn't work. Go ahead. Favorite WKRP character? Penis flytrap. Hello. Big Brothers Bar. Hello. Hi, dog. Hey, dog. Well, I'm on a delay here listening on my Alexa, so you got to bear with me. Did you hear about the two guys walking into the urinal and the little skinny guy and the big old fat guy walks in this, next to him? This better, good. This so better good. be terrible, dog. And he says, uh, wow, you're really fat, aren't you? And the guy goes, yeah. He goes, well, how long has it been since you've seen your penis? He said, long time guy says well why don't you dye it big fat guy says why what color is it now <laughs> that's good okay yeah with dog you never know yeah i was a little uh, concerned jesus <laughs> his battery's gonna run out <laughs> hello <laughs> hold on <coughs> go ahead i got a question for dog what do you think of the rectum as a whole <laughs> I, I think I'm answering it so much and so frequently that the that speakerphone it, yeah. isn't working anymore. Yeah. <laughs> the speakerphone's had it. 
James Robert Hakeem Dobbins, transient, charged with domestic abuse assault, fourth degree criminal mischief, a controlled substance violation, and failure to affix a drug tax stamp. Shady Glen Court, February 26th, 8.08 p.m. On the above date and time, the defendant was at the victim's residence for a gender reveal party and was asked to leave by the victim. The defendant refused to leave, but the victim managed to get him outside of the residence. While outside, the defendant was seen slashing the victim's tires. The defendant then kicked the victim's front door in, causing significant damage, preventing the door from being secured or shut. Police located the defendant in a parking lot of a nearby come-and-go behind the victim's residence. Search incident to arrest revealed 10 bags of individually packaged marijuana for sale. And that's why gender reveal parties are terrible. It's a hell of a gender reveal party. Yeah. Why? This guy's bringing 10 bags of weed. <laughs> Slashing tires. Look at that little uh, sonogram. Yeah. <laughs> Have a puff. Have a, there you go. Uh, March 1st, 1259 p.m. at Boyerham Street and Highway 6 East. An intoxicated male just got off the Iowa City bus at the stop on Boyerham, which, by the way, I noticed the other day now has security cameras. Yeah. Yeah. For a bus stop. <laughs> They're putting them in all of them. Oh, really? The way I understand it. Well, that's actually it. good. I mean, that's good if they are. Yeah. Older black male, 60s, carrying a garbage bag. Bus driver advised he was so intoxicated. How intoxicated was this guy? He was so intoxicated he could barely stand up. Hi yo. Requesting him checked on and moved along to somewhere safe. Oh. Poor guy's just carrying. All he had to do. To, oh, uh, it's part of a two-parter, Steve. That's why yeah. I was trying to figure out what's going on there. Uh, 2.36 p.m. at Boyerman Highway 6. Male fell off his bucket right at the corner. <laughs> well, he thinks he might need some assistance. Fell off his bucket. Fell off his bucket. <laughs> Got off the bus and had trouble getting off the bus, and then yeah. he tried to sit on a bucket and he couldn't get on the bucket. <laughs> yeah, he fell off the bucket. <laughs> it's a metaphor for life right there. <laughs> if you fall off that bucket, you keep getting on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Abdul Ghani Jamal, 300 East 9th Street in Tipton, charged with indecent exposure, 602 Westgate Street, 11.46 p.m. On the above date and time, the defendant was seen by the victim and multiple witnesses outside 602 Westgate Street. Witnesses saw the defendant, who had his pants down and was masturbating, while looking in their living room window from across the parking lot. The defendant was found in the area matching the description and positively identified by the victim and witnesses. That's impressive, across the parking lot through I, a window. Yeah, that is impressive. Wow. Whatever he saw, I really liked. Hello? Hold on. Go ahead. Well, you can clearly see this guy's nuts. I'll be more careful with that. Travis David Hill, transient, charged with public intoxication, as well as providing false identity information, harassment of a public official, and public urination and defecation. 114 East Iowa Avenue, Joe's Place, 223 a.m. On the above date and time, the defendant was causing trouble at Joe's place. The defendant was cursing at bar staff and patrons and refusing to leave after staff asked. When officers made contact with the defendant, he was acting belligerently, smelled of ingested alcohol, and had an unsteady gait. Uh, the threshold was okay. The ratio was, uh, could have yeah, been better. Could have been better. The defendant refused to identify himself after multiple requests. The defendant stated his name was Tim Dwight, and he walked away. Uh, again, this guy is, uh, well, it doesn't say how big he is, 5'11", which is taller than Tim Dwight, I believe. Oh, yeah. About the same age, though. Um, it could have, So he could have been Tim Dwight. I'm saying that he's not like like 20 years younger than him or something like that, a black guy. No, it's no. similar. Uh, after walking down the block, the defendant pulled down his sweatpants and started urinating on a sign. Well, Tim wouldn't do no, that. No, I feel bad because now we know Tim's dad listens. The defendant provided a poster SPBT resulting in a point oh one seven BAC. So he wasn't even drunk. No. <laughs> he just wanted to just pee on a sign. Just wore sweatpants to the bar on a Saturday night and decided to pee on a sign. <laughs> I don't think I've ever worn sweatpants to a bar before. Uh, March 12th, 947 a.m. at 820 Cross Park Avenue, Cross Park Place. Male complained as a no-contact order in the lobby with an aluminum baseball bat. I don't think he has a no-contact order with a bat. I think he's no, got he's with somebody in the building, and he decided to bring yeah. a bat. Yeah. 
never good. March 20th, 8.55 p.m. at 919 Highway 1 West. That's at Walmart. White Dodge pickup truck parked next to the complainant. He's acting very suspicious. Complainant is camping here in a Ford excursion with a generator outside. So the complainant is camping in the Walmart parking lot with a generator and thinks the other guy is suspicious. Yeah. Hello? Hello. Hi, dog. Well, you can't blame that guy. The sign said no dumping. (laughs) Dog is having a Hall of Fame day. Yeah. Yeah, your dad could pick up some pointers. Oh, he could. (laughs) Frequency of calls. Yeah. The ratio to quality and quantity, dog is nailed. Yeah. Two calls, knocked out of the park. My dad's just throwing anything out there and hoping it sticks, which we've had a few people like that in the police reports already. Yeah. Yeah. March 21st, 5.50 a.m. at 429 Southgate Avenue, Shelter House. Female panicked and fell. Just keep hollering like she's hurt or something. Well, she just fell, so... Yeah, so she might be hurt. Yes. (laughs) Or something. She fell and she's yelling. I mean, she's acting like she's hurt. Hello? Falling never hurt anyone. Landing did. Oh, man. But I know another joke from the Acker man that no one understands. I guess he failed I almost texted uh, Chief Blackhawk yesterday to say, hey, we're doing the police reports. But then I remember that 6 o'clock in the morning in Colorado. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's a musician, so he ain't up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, March 23rd, 119 p.m. at 2530 West Winds Drive. That's at Fairway. White female, red hair, older, bigger, green jacket, could barely talk. Not sure she had her teeth in. Asking people for money for gas and stating her car is broke down on Governor Street. Oh. Well, she made it pretty far, West Winds Drive. Yeah. That's nowhere near Governor Street. No, not at all. What if she sold the teeth to get a ride over there? Then maybe they fell in a couch. Yeah. I don't know. How, does it fall? How do your teeth fall in? I don't know. I've got a whole page in here that doesn't have any markings on it, so I don't know if there was actually a Hall of Famer in here. Nope. I don't know how that got in there. Uh, We move on to March 25th at 6.45 p.m. This will be at 1660 Sycamore Street, Sycamore Mall. In front of Joanne Fabrics, bright blue Cadillac with a white hood and top, occupied by two black males. Think they're maybe trying to run over their friend, or they're just messing around (laughs) with the running over the friend. Yeah. <laughs> usually it's pretty easy to tell if they're trying to run them down. Yeah, they usually, yeah, yeah you'll see the, the friend under the car. Under the car, yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hi, dog. Wasn't that lady on her way to Gumby's? Because she didn't have her teeth. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, dog. Yeah, no. Mm. Streak's over. Yeah. <laughs> Like Icarus. <laughs> yeah. Too close to the sun. <laughs> March 26th, 1125 a.m. at 2500 Bittersweet Court. I don't know whether to laugh or cry. No movement on the entire block. Very quiet. A little too quiet. <laughs> what do you think your neighbors are up to? <laughs> yeah, what's going on? It's 1130 in the morning and there's nothing going on and you think that's suspicious. Maybe they're at work. <laughs> yeah. I would like to think. March 27th, 1 p.m. at 1129 Mormon Trek Boulevard. White male, gray coat, jeans, skater shoes, seems intoxicated. Said he was talking to a pine cone. (laughs) He's on the driveway off Walden behind the complainant's apartment. He seems intoxicated. He seems. (laughs) Pine cone had a lot to say, maybe. Yeah, you never know. You don't know. Uh, March 28th, 1249 p.m. at 410 East Washington Street. He's doing a little ventriloquism thing. Yeah. <laughs> Iowa City Police Department. Can't find his axe. Having it as a coping skill, and he needs it. He needs his axe to cope. <laughs> it's his companion axe. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He wants to take it everywhere with him. Yeah, on airplanes and stuff. Yeah. Some people get like a dog yeah. or a cat. Yeah. You got an axe. <laughs> March 28th, 6.50 p.m. at 912 South Dubuque Street. 
stray black cat with an extra arm in the backyard. <laughs> well, I think any arm on a cat is going to be extra. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> extra arm? It just would be an arm. I guess. Because they don't have arms, so if it had an arm. That'd be something. Or a five-legged cat. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Get that on Ripley's Believe It or Not. Uh, let's see. April 9th, 3.16 p.m., 2400 Taylor Drive, Weatherby Park. Three dogs running around off-leash at the park. Complain it's trying to play disc golf, and the dogs are taking other people's discs. <laughs> see, that was a, maybe my favorite call of the year. Yeah, I do love that. People playing disc golf, and the yeah. dogs think it's a Frisbee and are just taking the discs yeah, and running they, with them. They don't know. No, they don't know. <laughs> they think you're playing with them. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, they probably do. That is my. That really because is it's so clean and wholesome, but it's hilarious. Yeah, that's like a rated G <laughs> Hall of Famer right there. No masturbation or defecation yeah, needed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, this is our first Washington County call of the Hall of Fame. Uh, April thirteenth, five fifty-one p.m., three twenty West Main Street in Washington. Call reports he was walking a dog, and a female sitting on the porch of three twenty West Main threw a very large rock at him. Officers responded and spoke to the female, who said she was just trying to play with the dog. Yeah. By throwing a large throwing rock at its owner. a large rock at the owner. <laughs> yeah. Just play with the dog. Could he use those dogs to get in the Frisbees? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those dogs are having the time of their life. You know, it's something and something else. They call the cops on them. <laughs> well, if you're trying to play disc golf, I could see it would be annoying. Well, maybe you should sit down with the dogs and explain it to them. Yes. <laughs> well, first of all, the dogs aren't supposed to run loose in the park. I understand, but... Although, you know, we haven't had many Weatherby call parks in, like, months. You know, what happened? Uh, well, I guess they cleaned everybody out. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, April 17th, 12.08 a.m., 1030 Martin Street. There's a subject that looks like a clown in the park, the Emma Harvett Park, standing near traffic, provoking drivers. <laughs> it's an angry clown. Yeah. Bothering people at 1230 in the morning. April 18th, 753 a.m., 2213 Arizona Avenue. Ranger beam lights. These are illegal weapons, and it hurts her when she gets hit with them. Requesting they be stopped because she has already had to have a toe and foot amputated from the light. Suspects well, be Why didn't she just have the foot amputated? Good question. <laughs> Maybe they're on different feet. Oh, okay. Uh, request sus suspects be arrested. They hang out at Union in California. Complainant also can't get her new fridge until Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to throw that in. She wants everybody to be aware. We haven't had a 2213 Arizona Avenue in a while either. Yeah. I think she moved. April 18th, 5.14 p.m. at 410 East Washington Street, the Iowa City Police Department. Started wanting to talk to county, then a U.S. Marshal, then the FBI. Wants a phone call regarding war crimes, extortion, racketeering, and attempted murder. And that's just the Trump administration. Yeah. Oh, look at that. I got political. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Wow. Stay in your lane, lane. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's get back to the police reports here. April 19th, 1043 p.m., 937 Rhine Court. Sister and sister's boyfriend and romantic partner, partner having a threesome at the complainant's house. I'd be mad, too. Yeah. You were invited. Well, it is it is his sister and sister's boyfriend. Right. So, yeah, he probably didn't want to be invited. Oh, that's true. But still, yeah. three people having sex inside your house is probably not. Yeah, that's not true. When you're not involved and it's a family member, I can see what's the problem. Yeah. Somebody sent me a photo. Let's see what that is. I got a photo, too. Oh, I think we got the same photo. Yeah. It's Mikey G enjoying the Police Reports Hall of Fame show, Somewhere Tropical. Hi, Mikey G. He's just sitting. It's a picture of him just sitting like on a cabana. Yeah. Like out on the porch of the cabana or whatever it is. Yeah. With like palm trees everywhere sitting yeah, on his say, laptop. Yeah, we're in a blizzard and here I am. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's mean. That's mean, Mikey G. Yeah, Mikey G. He's taunting us is what I he's doing. plug my phone in. You do that. I'll keep reading these. 
Oh, I don't have a date on this one. Oh, well. Uh, 370 Scott Court. That is at Casey's. Very erratic movements. Walking around a car while it is in the car wash. <laughs> That's not good. No. You can wet that. That's what I was saying. I think we still were on the air there. Yeah. We, we just were. got off the internet and I can't hear yeah. you. Yeah. We're both fine now. Stupid static electricity. Oh, it would have been uh, April 23rd because we have the rest of that call. Dustin Allen Young, transient, charged with public intoxication, as well as providing false identity information and possession of a controlled substance and possession of drug paraphernalia. 370 Scott Court, Casey's General Store, 4.13 p.m. On the above date and time at the above location, the defendant was called in by concerned citizens for walking into a car wash. The defendant became trapped inside the car wash and began pacing around. Upon arrival, officers noticed the defendant was extremely high on meth and had bloodshot eyes and rapid erratic movements. The defendant was unable to extricate himself from the car wash and needed assistance. Upon exiting the car wash, defendant provided officers with a name that returned as false. Defendant gave another fake name before finally revealing his identity. Defendant was placed under arrest in a meth pipe located during search. Uh, two baggies containing meth were inside the meth pipe. Defendant admitted he was high and had just purchased the meth. Now, Mikey G is uh, in Mexico. Ah, south of the border, down Mexico way? Yeah. Nice for him. Christopher Navar Dahlhauser, transient, charged with interference with official acts at Gilbert and Highland, 10.36 p.m. on May 24th. The defendant was operating a bicycle on Highland Court without lights. Officers got behind the defendant and turned on their emergency lights to let, get him to stop. The defendant pedaled away from officers while the officers behind him with lights and sirens activated. I don't think you're going to outrun him. The defendant was chased for several blocks by several officers. <laughs> Low-speed bicycle chase. He's on a bicycle. The defendant then ditched his bike and took off running from fully uniformed officers on foot. The defendant got tired, gave up, laid on the ground, and was placed under arrest. Hello. Hello. Hi, dog. Now, remember, I'm on a delay <laughs> that that guy in the car wash, I believe, was circling the drain. I'll give it to him. Also charged with interference with official acts, that last guy, by the way. I don't get it. Circling the drain because it's a car wash and water. Why is that funny? Because it's a water pun. He's in a car wash. Yeah, so he's circling the drain. Why is that funny? Because it's a pun. What, what are you doing? What are you? I'm just. Not... Are you going to question everything? Because my dad is. We'd be here all day if you're going to question every one of these. <laughs> I have a question. That, I just questioned that. Okay. You know, next year we're going to talk about when the when the, the bell should uh, should ring, or people should call. <laughs> Might want to limit that next year. <laughs> I wouldn't be against it. Uh, I just didn't. I don't. Okay. Circling the drain. Ah. <laughs> whatever. He said whatever. he was on a delay. He whatever. didn't say he was on a delay. What did it have him? Okay. He was on a delay. I understand that. Okay. I'm fine now. Okay. Hello. Andy was on meth, Captain. Get it? No. <laughs> okay. No, I didn't. No, I can't think of, you know, I don't know what goes through somebody's mind when they're on no. meth. No, what's going through my mind is we're about a third of the way through and we're almost halfway to Hawk Fanatic, so we, we need to wrap it up. Speed it up. Uh, March, I'm sorry, April 28th, 836 a.m., 2430 Muscatine Avenue, the Eden Apartments, Apartment 30. Homeless male outside selling shoes to people. White male with face tattoos wearing a yellow jumper. Where does he keep the shoes when he's not selling them? That's my question. Yeah. What a heel. Ah, see, there you go. Yeah. Tongues will wag. I like uh, Cagney and Lacey's. Laces, I guess. Yeah, yeah whatever. April 28th, 1222 p.m. at 511 South Gilbert Street, Graduate Hotel. Uh, oh, that's kind of weird. Two of them are together here. This is at the graduate. I'm sorry. 210 South of Buke Street. Male subject refusing to leave. 
picked up antlers and threatened staff. <laughs> I assume that's some decor that they have in the lobby or something. He's going to guard them. I guess. <laughs> Favorite politician, Al Gore. There you go. <laughs> April 30th, 12.06 a.m., 10 South Clinton, the summit. People are working for minimum wage. Staff letting underage people in. Also, the roof is leaking sewer water, and they serve it to people. A customer was dragged out by his hair tonight because he didn't spend enough money. I'm going to guess none of that is accurate. No, except for the guy being dragged out of there. By his hair? Yeah. Because he didn't spend enough money? No. <laughs> Something's wrong with him. Okay. He's scaring people. Well, hopefully he doesn't go to another bar and cause more problems. Well, that, what are the odds? April 30th, 1, 12 a.m. to 11 Iowa Avenue. El Rays Live and Dive. Complaint advised bouncers are letting underage subjects into the bar who are asking to sleep with male customers for money. He advised he is of age and so are his friends. They have to tell people you're probably not. Yeah, I don't think you are or your friends. This guy's having a bad night out downtown. <laughs> May 2nd, 1059 p.m. at 615 South Governor, apartment 3. Crazy woman pounding on the door and won't leave. She is sort of a girlfriend. The crazy sure. woman. Yeah, so we're, we're sort of. The person you've described as crazy, you describe as kind of a girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what that means. <laughs> It's usually the sex without any of the, you know, yeah. dating. Yeah. Uh, David Scott Martin, 324 East Davenport, Apartment 1. Charged with public intox at Bloomington and Lynn Streets at 7.23 p.m. on May 2nd. Officers responded to the above location for a report of a suspicious male wandering around people's yards, foaming at the mouth. An officer located the defendant at the above location matching the description. The defendant exhibited multiple signs of intoxication, including bloodshot, watery eyes, slurred speech, impaired balance, and a strong odor of ingested alcohol. The defendant walked away from the officer, ignoring multiple orders to stop walking, and only stopped when the officer grabbed his arm. The officer took him to the ground, ignored all legal orders to stop resisting, hands forced behind his, uh, behind his back. He was handcuffed. PBT refused. Also charged with interference with official acts. You just like the foaming of the mouth. I do like the so foaming of the mouth. Put in the Hall of Fame for foaming of the mouth. I remember yeah, that one. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, May 6th, 6.17 p.m., 123 East College Street. Male in a hospital gown, white male with a beard, throwing rocks out of the construction area. Male acting strange. <laughs> yeah. In a hospital gown and the throwing <laughs> rocks in the construction area weren't a clue. Yeah. That's kind of strange. kind of strange. Leon Brown. 7507 South Carpenter Street, Iowa City. Yeah, Char today he would be called Noel Brown because it's backwards. Oh, yeah. 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 I didn't even think of Leon Noel being forwards or backwards. Yeah. Charged with domestic abuse assault, 200 East Block, cor uh, block of East Court, <clears throat> 1240 a.m. On the time and date above, officers were flagged down by the victim of domestic assault. Officers were advised by the reporting party and victim that her and the defendant had gotten into a verbal argument about not having a threesome and began to physically fight. The victim was punched in the face and had a visible injury to her bottom lip. The victim advised her and the defendant are parents of the same child and reside together. Sometimes you have a kid, you want to spice things up, and yeah. he suggests a threesome, and she is not into it. No, not at all. It's her second threesome of the Hall of Fame. That might be a new record. I think it is. I think, it's, I think one would have been a new record. Yeah. Okay, good for us. We're pioneers. May 11th, 6.46 p.m., 915 West Main Street in Washington. Caller reports subjects arguing at the rocket slide or the basketball court. Subject dressed in all black has a machete and a baseball bat. Officers responded, the subjects were just talking, no issues, and the male with the machete and baseball bat advises he uses them to do lawn care. <laughs> the baseball bat. Yeah, the machete I could see. Yeah. That, that is generally what machetes are for. Is yeah, I don't maybe know. Maybe not about... lawn care necessarily, yeah. but certainly some kind of landscaping and yeah. cutting down weeds. But the baseball bat. That's yeah. That's oh. suspect. Call Carew. See if they have a baseball bat they carry with them. I don't believe they do. I'll ask it when he comes up out, out here. Yeah. Clears this out later. Thomas M. Green, 210 and a half North Lynn Street in Iowa City, charged with Second-degree robbery, as well as assault on persons in certain occupations. Interference with official acts causing bodily injury. And I believe there is one more charge here. 
Yes, attempted burglary, third degree. This is happening at 400 Fairchild, May 13th, 4.45 a.m. Officers were dispatched to report of a male walking through a residential neighborhood completely naked. Another officer attempted to uh, locate the defendant. While the other officer exited the driver's seat of his patrol car, the defendant rushed him, pinned him to the side of the patrol car, and attempted to rip the door open. While doing this, the defendant was screaming that he could do anything he wanted, that he was going to take the patrol car. The officer in question sustained minor injuries in the form of numbness and pain to his arm as a result of the assault. Hello? Well, you can clearly see this guy's nuts. See, I think he's spacing him out. That's good. Yeah. Spacing him out a little bit. May 14th, 1131 p.m., 2018 Waterfront Drive. That is the Hilltop Manufactured Housing Community. That is the Hilltop Trailer Park where the hills are alive with the sounds of despair. Apartment 24. Lot 24. House on the corner with the white van with a trailer. Loud party with people being noisy and goofing off. Nobody likes a party where people are goofing no. off. Let's get serious. And loud noise. Yeah, the drinking. Sure. Yeah. Goofing off. Come on. May 15th, 323 a.m. Happy birthday, Jan. 807 East Washington Street, apartment number four. Someone trying to climb up the side of the apartment building. It's like Spider-Man. Just like Spider-Man. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> May 15th, 833 a.m. at 3353 Tulane Avenue. Complainant's daughter found an animal in the front yard. She thinks it's a dog. Sent a picture to her dad who thinks it's some kind of rodent. It's wrapped in a towel now near the tree in the front yard. Requesting an officer to take it to the shelter if it's a dog and options if it's not. If it's not, you let it go because it's not a dog. Yeah. It's, it's a rodent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what other options you need. Well, you you know. I don't know if we have rodents in Iowa that, si- that size, but. Well, even so, maybe it was a possum or something, but it, you true. should be able to tell the difference between. At that and a dog? And a dog. Yes. Yeah. Not the weird one that was really bad a few years ago where the, they mistook the animal for something else and it was like way off. Yeah. I can't remember what that one was, but it was pretty good. May 19th, 312 p.m., 1125 North Dodge Street. That is the North Dodge High V. Male is confused. Said he was okay. Complained to help him get into his car. Then he ran into a car. I guess he wasn't okay then. Yeah, then maybe you shouldn't have helped him get in his car. <laughs> yeah, I'd feel bad about it. <laughs> yeah. Alondo Maurice Gordon. Some people yeah. call him Maurice. Yeah. 409 South Dodge, Apartment 4, charged with dominion or control of a firearm as a felon at his apartment at 331 p.m. May 3rd. On the above date and time, the defendant reported that he was shot in... Uh, at in the rear of his apartment complex while taking out his garbage. Through investigation, officers learned the defendant shot himself in the foot on accident inside his apartment complex. The defendant admitted he shot himself on accident. Present in the apartment was the defendant with his nine children, ranging from ages 2 to 13. Like the old lady who lived in the shoe. Officers conducted a search warrant on the defendant's apartment and located a loaded 9mm Stoger STR-9C pistol and a 45 caliber Interarms Star Elbar pistol. The defendant admitted to moving and hiding the firearms. The defendant is convicted felon for a second degree theft and prohibited from possessing firearms. Or having two guns with nine kids in the house. Yeah, loaded. Yeah. Uh, okay, I had that one. Uh, May 20th, 410 p.m. at 1940 Lower Muscatine Road, Jimmy Jack's Rib Shack. Complain at once, staff arrested, because when she requested a different server, they wouldn't entertain a request. She is available by phone. Just want a different server. Yeah, well, you know, maybe they didn't have the staff. Well, then they're going to call the police on you. Yeah, yeah. You're miserable. Uh, by the way, KCJJ, Iowa City. Thank you. Justin, arrested. May 20th, 6.07 p.m. 1122 North Dodge, St. Joseph's Cemetery. Complainant was walking through, and she was forced off the roadway by a vehicle driven by staff. They were shaking their finger at her because there are signs posted, no one is supposed to walk on the grass. So you were walking on the grass, which you were fully admitting to. Yeah. And and they're chasing you They by shook vehicle. their finger at you because you're not supposed to do it. Okay, but they weren't chasing her. No, I don't think so. Okay. It says forced off the roadway. Okay. I don't know. Sounds stupid. 
Ah, uh, oh, I don't know why this is in big one. I don't know why I had to print this one so big. Look at that. That's crazy. Uh, May 31st, 2.14 p.m., 9.17 Robin Road. Caller stating she has a bird's nest in the tree next to her home. Requesting assistance removing it. It's a bird's nest in, in a, a tree. tree. That's what trees are for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The birds live there. <laughs> uh, Mikey G's in the chat room explaining he didn't want her to send that picture. Ah, uh, well, we got it anyway. Yeah, we got it anyway, Mikey G, in your warm area there. June 2nd, 6.05 p.m., 1100 Arthur Street. That's your town and campus apartment. Apartment N2. Older white female came out and yelled racial slurs to the complainant and family. Then went back inside. Like a cuckoo clock. Yes, like a racist cuckoo clock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 6.42 p.m., 2718 Wayne Avenue, apartment 8. <laughs> complainant is a neighbor. Advised a large group of men and women are yelling and screaming. Hasn't heard anything about weapons or anything physical. Advised, it's bedlam. <laughs> bedlam! <laughs> People are just yelling. I do love this town. Yeah. You know, <laughs> bedlam. Bedlam. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love <laughs> Trying to fancy it up with cool words. Yeah. Hey, we went to college. <laughs> we did for a while. Yeah. June 4th, 1242 p.m. at 464 Samoa Drive. Requesting a phone call. Complainant wants to tell Animal Control that he caught a fox in a live trap, then released it into Willow Creek Park. Yeah, well, yeah sure. There you go. <laughs> it's not like there's kids playing soccer or anything in June. <laughs> a wild animal. Let's throw that in the park. June 5th, 5.01 a.m. Oh, 220 South Van Buren, our first H-bar call of the Hall of Fame. A bunch of people screaming in the alleyway. Complainant thinks they were strippers inside. Refused information. Uber was arriving on the scene, so she was leaving. She guess she didn't want to stick around for the Uber. Yeah. Or she did stick around for the Uber. She was leaving on an Uber. Yeah. Strippers. Inside. Could be strippers inside. Yeah. We explain why they're open until four in the or they were open till four in the morning. You know how they're open till four in the morning anymore. We're not getting those calls. Now the city told them to close by two o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, all of a sudden <laughs> no, any calls anymore. Yeah. Uh, June fifth, six forty six PM. 1402 East 2nd Street in Washington. Call reports the rooster at the residence is very loud in the mornings. <laughs> Officers responded and advised they were not aware they could not have a rooster. Written warning for having an illegal animal, the rooster will be removed. She said a rooster. Yeah. Well, that's generally when they are loud is in the morning. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, uh, 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 yeah. 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 Hey, this one's my birthday, June 7th, 6.08 p.m. Favorite Five. drink, Old Crow. Yeah. 520 S South Avenue C in Washington. Call reports someone at the residence hit her with a towel. Officers have spotted the incident will be handled within the household. <laughs> it snapped her with a towel. Yeah, she didn't like it and called the cops. <laughs> That's why it's in the Hall of Fame. June 9th. 221 a.m., 1100 Arthur Street. Town of Campus Apartments. Apartment M1. Male passed out in a van. Keeps hitting his head on the horn and is waking people up. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Uh, June 11th, 122 a.m. At 2801 Highway 6 East, the Bon Air Manufactured Housing Community. It's a Bon Air Trailer Park. Apartment 347. Lot 347. Complainant got upset because a male called his... Or, uh, Complainant got upset because a male called her his ex-wife's name. Ooh. Ugh. Depending on where that happened, that could be very bad. Yeah. And June 11th, 128 a.m., 1103 and a half Marcy Street. CO alarm was sounding last night. She put a fan in front of it, <laughs> refusing medical and adv was advised to evacuate. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. If you put the fan in front of the alarm, all the gas dissipates and leaves your house. <laughs> yeah. You won't have to worry at all, too. Well, You're you won't dead. have to worry at all for very long. Yeah. <laughs> uh, June 12th, 849 p.m. at 1100 Arthur Street. Tony Campus Apartments. Apartment C1. Complaint of watched a short black male wearing a black hat, gray or light colored shirt, walking, uh, walking a female in a dog by a chain. I think it just means walking with a female. <laughs> Complaint of saw them going to C1. 
The dog was very aggressive. Complainant was worried about the female, who was also on a chain. No, I was wrong. Yeah. He was walking the female. He was, he was, wow. White female, tall, skinny, wearing a yellow shirt and backpack. Complainant last saw the subjects about two minutes ago. Who hasn't had to walk their female? You know, With the dog. Yeah. Well, the dog and the female aren't going to get acquainted if you don't walk them together. Well, that's right? true. Yeah, they're going to bond a little bit. June 13th, 727. Well, they both stop at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> that's trouble. Yeah, it is. Yeah. June 13th, 727 p.m., 429 Southgate Avenue, Shelter House. Male is missing a toe. It is now black with flies around it. <laughs> I guess they found it. I don't know. <laughs> Thank God. There's one of that story. I would think. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> June 18th, 914 p.m., 2825 Triple Crown Lane, apartment 12. Drunk male trying to get through the door. <laughs> Sometimes they don't have to be very long and complicated. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> June 20th, 1217 p.m. at 1512 Underwood Avenue in Riverside. Reports are two boys got into an argument, one trying to run over the other, requesting deputies report to be filed. My brother and I fought. I never tried to run him over. No. No. June 22nd, 457 p.m. at 3661 Rochester Avenue, the Iowa City Rehab and Health Care Center. Request an officer a call about a resident claiming his bucket and bags were stolen. Poor bucket. He just had to, he yeah. took his bucket. Yeah, he took his bucket. <laughs> Why you'd need a bucket at the rehab center, I don't know. But... <laughs> June 25th. 11, oh, look, I guess it's a really bad rehab center. I know yeah. why there's a bucket. Oh, yeah. June 25th, 1129 a.m., 1100 Arthur Street. Town and campus apartment. Town, town and campus dominating today. I know. Apartment D1. Requesting an officer speak with her three-year-old son about behavioral issues. I just really try to get through to him. Yeah, you know, I just can't handle my three-year-old son. Yes. He doesn't understand behavior issues at yeah. three. Yeah. So why doesn't an officer come and scare the hell out of yes. the kid? <laughs> Scar him emotionally for life. <laughs> June 28th, 324 a.m. At 2340 Hines Road, United Natural Foods. Truck driver blocking the fuel island and won't leave. The driver is trying to fight the yard jockey. No mention of weapons. Wow. I didn't know there was a term of yard jockey. No. No. It's like a little guy who watches the yard? I guess. I don't know. Yeah. They're trying to fight, though. June 28th, 650 p.m. At... Uh, 110 South Lynn Street, release body modification. Complainant was here for a piercing. A male employee disappeared for about an hour and came back with bloodshot eyes and slurred speech. <laughs> Complainant would like him checked on. <laughs> yeah. Get I'm the... impressed you stuck around for an hour. Yeah, get the <laughs> hell out of there. You're getting pierced yeah. by, a, by a drunk guy. Yeah, <laughs> if you were like going to like come and go and the clerk <laughs> disappeared for an hour and came back drunk, I'd still buy stuff. Guy doing your tattoo? Probably yeah. want kind of sober. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, where are we? June 26th, 5.17 p.m., 220 West 5th Street in Washington. Caller reports her husband found a set of keys in his pocket. He's not sure where he picked them up. Officer advised for documentation. Dispatch able to be contact with the owner who returned the keys. So the wife found strange keys in the yeah. husband's pocket. He didn't know how they got there. I don't know how they got Somehow there. Somehow he was able to contact the owner of the keys. Yeah. Because that's easy to find. And they got him back to her. That's nice. Yeah. I'm glad the story has a happy ending and no other details involved. Well, no, it was a close one, though. For, you know, if I were the wife, I'd be, you know. Yeah, the keys just fell into his pocket, apparently. Yeah, I'd be suspicious. Some woman's keys. Yeah. I like that one a lot. I'd be suspicious. Yes, yes, I think so, maybe. Uh, oh, July 6th, 12.04 a.m. at North Dodge Street and I-80. White male jumping up and down and making obscene gestures at people. <laughs> Welcome to Iowa City. 
short and to the point. Yeah, it's, they're not all, like, really long. <laughs> July 7th, 11.33 a.m. at South Gilbert and Highway 6. Dirty or light-skinned male came out from under the Highway 6 bridge to the west of Gilbert Street by the parking for fishing on the south side. He was completely naked. Got to the naked part at the end. Yeah. A long description. He was naked. Just look for the naked guy. Yeah, naked. Hmm. Hello? Well, you can clearly see this guy's nuts. July 5th, 3070 Highway 22 in Riverside. Caller reports customers are reporting two people are arguing outside near a dark gray Chrysler van just married painted on the windows. <laughs> That's going to work out fine. Yeah, that'll be great. That's a good start. Yeah. July 16th, 104 p.m. at Hawkeye Barber. That is at 124 South Clinton. Black male, no shirt, black sweatpants, holding a teddy bear, harassing people out on the street. Told the complainant's client he was going to beat up three people. <laughs> With a so he's bear. like the ghost of Christmas present, ghost of Christmas. You know, yeah, yeah. He'll be visited by three people I will beat up. Yeah. Me and my teddy bear. Some genies give three wishes. He's going to beat three people up. Yeah, maybe he's a genie. That's Could why be. he has no... Hi, Suter. Suter made it in. Yeah. Good for Suter. Yeah. July 17th, 854 a.m., 515 North Dubuque Street. Homeless male standing in the complainant's attic. Well, I guess he's not homeless anymore. Yeah, he's in your attic. He had to go through a lot of house to get there. <laughs> so I got questions. Yeah, climb up a ladder. It's not like he's on your porch, you know, where he's like, oh, he's yeah. the door, got on the porch. Go through the living room, up the stairs. <laughs> yeah. July 20th at 632 a.m. at 429 Southgate Avenue, Shelter House. Lady who is banned has an axe. And she has an axe to grind, apparently. Yeah, evidently. A lot, of, a lot of homeless people with axes also. I know it. It must have had a sale or something. I, I guess. know Paul's is not around anymore. Well, we're, we're currently tied they're... as far as the number of threesomes and number of homeless people with axes. <laughs> yeah. so we'll see what happens. Uh, July 21st, 2185 Lexington Boulevard in Washington. Dispatch reports a subject in the jail lobby turning himself in on a Washington County warrant. Officers responded and arrested 51-year-old Jeremy Howard Twaddle of 405 East 15th Street uh, for uh, was fingerprinted and released. We just put him in because his name was Twaddle. <laughs> yeah, we liked it. We liked the name Twaddle. I know I remember that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alejandro Javier Sobrevela Bellomi. <laughs> I'm married. I know. I, I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, I'm not even considering it. I know. 816 North Dubuque Street in Iowa City, charged with public intox, as well as what else? Public urination and defecation and possession of a fictitious license. Uh, this happening at Clinton Street at 2 a.m. Defendant was observed urinating in the alley right off Clinton Street. Defendant was in the public view. He had bloodshot, watery eyes, poor speech, poor balance, smelled of ingested alcohol, handed the officer a fictitious Ohio driver's license. Breath sample, 0.147, post-arrest, 0.149%. That was Alejandro Javier Sobervela below me. July 22nd, 704 a.m., 401 Hawk Ridge Drive, apartment 4213. Lost her keys and is locked in her home. It's not okay. how keys work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Be locked out of the home. Yeah, but you're in the home. In the home. She's locked in the home because she lost her keys. Hello. I don't mean to interrupt the police reports. Don't interrupt the police reports. Yeah, oh, actually, it's I a mean, Hall of Fame is show. Hall of Fame. Yes, yeah. that's why you're calling. <laughs> no, no. I wanted to oh. tell Steve a little bit of radio code. I see Part that two is available. I don't know what that means. They see that's radio code. That could be anything. Yeah. We could be talking be. about that's what's mysterious. your two part Christmas spectacular you've been telling us about. It could be that. It, no, I listen, I'm gonna say neither yes nor no. You could be sending us Michael Mara's tax records for all we know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was talking to Mike and he said the US Capitol is the people's building and that everyone has a right to visit at any time. Yeah. <laughs> Mike is a big fan. <laughs> Of 
things like that. No, um, I woke up to a text from Steven Soboroff today, and he says, I need part two, so he got it because I'm a full-service guy. We're going to run part one again this Isn't morning. Is that good? And, yes, it's that. I don't know. I didn't listen. And we're going to <laughs> we're going to run part one and two together, a three-hour Rob Radio wow. Christmas. Well, three hours and 12 minutes, but who's counting? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to run that back-to-back -back when we're done here. Okay. Yeah. We're, That's and, fantastic. You know, and and the, I, even though I was, I was present for the recording of it, I still listened on the stream yesterday. Yeah. It's, it's always great to hear yourself in AM stereo. It's my favorite. Yeah, because he was listening on the stream. We're on AM stereo. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I but I did send it to you in mono. You're rechanneling it for stereo, right? Like oh, RCA yes. used to do. Yeah. Oh yes, yes. Electronically rechanneled for your listening enjoyment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to let you know because um, you know I didn't want to interrupt the police reports all of that. No, but there, you know what? There is a comment in the chat room that immediately I think of you. I think you would appreciate this. What is it? We had a police call where a guy said he was missing his toe, and then he found it. and It was black and covered in flies. Now, 39 Harvester writes in the chat room, it is the time of year for missing toe. <laughs> <laughs> That's better than anything we've said all day. Yeah. You know, if I were, I'd just turn off the radio station and go home. I've thought about it. <laughs> Don't you have a big switch that just turns off the radio station? Yes, we do. <laughs> a lever like in the Bride of Frankenstein. Uh, you pull it down, I thought, radio station goes off the air. And I, thought, I thought of it at 2 this morning in when I was In case of emergency or here. Dennis Murphy call. Yeah. That's what it says. <laughs> yeah. Well, the real reason I'm calling is to wish you guys a Merry Christmas. You too, Rob. Yeah. Uh, it is always so fun to know that we have our buddies out there in Iowa, and you guys are our lead liaison for everyone out there. And I always like to check in and see what's going on. And, uh, you know, we love you guys a whole bunch. And thank you for another great year. And thank you for carrying the stupid Christmas show. And, yes, Alan Sherman. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we look forward to it. Yes. Yeah, you can fast forward through that part. It's in part two. <laughs> Yeah, let us know exactly where it is so people can. <laughs> no, I would back time to it. I'd do like a Dick Clark thing. I'd yeah. do a countdown. Well, he doesn't do that now, but. Yeah. yeah. No, he doesn't. Bless his heart. He's passed. Yes. You know what? The last year they called his special, they changed it from New York's Rocket Eve. They called it Stroke of Midnight. <laughs> Rob? Rob. Steve, you know what? It's Christmas, and we're not going to have any of that. <laughs> it's, it's, we're getting ready for a new year. It's the Rob Radio Christmas Extravaganza. That's right. All the same records, just in a different order, and uh, lots of reverb. Oh, I did, yeah. actually, I've played three records that are new. See if you can spot them. Okay. <laughs> it's at 11 this morning here. Well, that's a soft start, isn't it? Because you guys could go all day. No, we're not going all day. No. Oh, come on. That's not how you promote. I have been here all night. You're like, the, you got to be like the guys that open a show and say, I don't know, we may go late tonight. Is that okay with everybody? <laughs> and then there's cheers. Yay! And then you're done at 10, 50, 9, 30. Yeah. <laughs> but that's Eastern time. That's not Eastern time. That's Central time. Yes. Yes. Okay, so everyone set your clock. <laughs> Wind the grandfather clock. You don't want to fall behind. Well, thank you, Rob. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I'm being cut off. This is the equivalent of hearing music at the Oscars. <laughs> well, we have a show at 9 o'clock, and we want to get this wrapped up by then. I understand. We, oh, we have uh, a hard out. We have a hard out at 9 Central, by the way. <laughs> Oh, so central. Okay, yes. let me everybody synchronize your watches. Uh, but no, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas to everybody in KCJJ land. And on behalf of Mike and Oscar, and to a much lesser extent, Pony, um, have a happy Christmas and a Merry New Year. Thank, thank you. you, Rob. Thanks. All right, love you guys. Talk to you soon. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for reminding me that's coming up, too. Yeah. Rob Radio. Rob Radio at 11 today. 722, that would be July 22nd at 639 p.m., 2670 Independence Road. Red two-door car and a white SUV hit each other, both left in the street with no one around them. <laughs> they just both ran. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hello. Nothing suspicious there.
Hey. Oh, no, hey. Knock that off. Yeah. It's Christmas. <laughs> uh, July 22nd, 9.06 p.m., Highway 1 West and Mormon Trek Boulevard. Uh, black car turning on a Mormon Trek at the speed of light. Wow. Tire flew off. Like, yeah. Yeah, SpaceX. It's, it's going really fast. It's Musk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then he took over Twitter and wrecked it. Yeah. Uh, oh, that same date, July 22nd, 9.07 p.m., Railroad Road and Call Drive. Black Dodge Charger missing the front part of its vehicle, <laughs> like he just hit a vehicle. Missing the front tire. Well, we know what happened. Yeah. Throwing sparks. Last seen southbound toward Still Rushmore. Driving a- yeah, Kablai was just on a walk in the area and thought this was suspicious. <laughs> yeah, I went from Iowa to Mormon Trek to Rarit Road yeah. and Call Drive, which is like yeah. down the hill from Deli Mart and then up a hill. and Yeah, without a tire. Without a tire. <laughs> And I couldn't even get through the snowbank this morning. Carew had to dig me out. Thanks, Carew. Thank you very much, Carew. We need him again. What's that? We need him again. We need him again? I yeah, they they did say they were going to come back. Yeah. Hopefully pretty soon. Or whenever. Whenever we leave, I guess. Uh, July 22nd, 1118 p.m. At 819 South 1st Avenue. Shakespeare's. Male customer keeps running into things and falling down. It was just falling down. It probably wouldn't have made the police report. Yeah. <laughs> but he's running into things and falling down. Uh, July 31st, 617 p.m., 1001 South Clinton Street, Riverfront Crossings Park. White male, no shirt, sleeping on a tricycle. <laughs> the bike is near a yield sign. Him's had a bad night. Him's had a real bad or night. Or a good night. Uh, 639 p.m., that same date, July 31st, at 731 South Riverside Drive. Come and go. White male, black cap, red shirt, 40s or 50s, male in the dumpster. <laughs> Sometimes emotionally, we're all there. Yeah. August 2nd, 945 p.m., 1002 Second Street in Wellman. Reports a dog that tried to attack her while she was getting into her vehicle. It jumped up on her vehicle and there were scratches on the driver's side door. It also chased her vehicle when she left. A black and brown chihuahua with a light blue collar <laughs> will attempt to make contact with the dog owner. It jumped on her car. That's yeah. A... The Chihuahua. Chihuahua's got good legs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, August 4th. Tried to attack her, the Chihuahua. Tried to attack her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. July, I'm sorry, August 4th, 821 p.m. At 965 South Riverside Drive, that is Ponchero's. Employee smelled gas and activated the sprinklers. Called in by a district manager who was not on the scene. I don't know if the sprinklers were needed for gas. Hello. Hello. Hi, dog. You know where else? Yeah. What? Where else? What? They well, smell he's gas. Not allowed. Not allowed. But it didn't. I don't know what it was going to be. Well, we, we don't smelling wanna, gas. We, he's not allowed. We don't want to know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but he probably shouldn't call back and explain it. That'd be really bad. Yeah. Uh, August 6th, 9.29 p.m. at 10.15 Cross Park Avenue, Villa Garden Apartments. Bunch of males in their vehicles in the parking lot. They don't live there. The residents can't park their vehicles. Unknown weapons. They do start fighting and shooting after they get to drinking. <laughs> well, I would have led with that. Yeah. <laughs> they keep parking. They're taking up all these parking spots. Yeah. Oh, also they get drunk and shoot at each other. <laughs> But really, this parking issue is... Yeah, you know, I'm trying to... (laughs) (laughs) Emmanuel Alexander Barnett, 904 Benton Drive, Apartment 12, charged driving while barred at Sunset and Arbery at 5.58 p.m. On the above date and time, the defendant and another vehicle, uh, female, were traveling in a 2013 Silver Ford Flex when a verbal argument started between the two. The defendant stopped the vehicle after both parties called 911 and waited for police. Speaking of the defendant, he admitted several times he was driving the above vehicle and he drives it often to work. The defendant stated he was driving to take the female to do laundry, then he was going to go to work. The defendant could not give a full answer if his current girlfriend, the owner of the vehicle, knew he was driving it. Oh, so his girlfriend's the owner of the vehicle and didn't know he was driving it with the woman who was going to go do his laundry. Yeah. That's odd. And he admitted he called the cops, even though he was driving while barred. 
Hello? Mail in a dumpster? Okay. He's on a delay. Yeah. It was I a previous know. call. I know. I know. Thank you, Bill. August 12th, 6.15 p.m. at 110 East College Street, Donnelly's. Tom is drunk with open containers sitting on a nearby bench, yelling at customers about buying a hooker. You know, you're going to talk of the game or you're going to yeah. step up. And you can't buy the hooker. You can rent, yeah, rent the hooker. basically. Yeah, yeah that's a good yeah. point. You do leave a deposit, though. Yeah. Well, yes. Yes, yeah, that's my bit. Both. No. Yes. We can't make it. I almost didn't make it down the lane. Drew's going to have to. You want to. Or Pat's going to go down. Well, yeah. tell Pat not to come. Yeah. And I let your daughter off. Okay. So. She's okay. not coming in. Okay. I'll tell Pat not to come. Yeah, tell him so not to. Need yes. Yes, we do. Yeah, because we would like to leave too. Yeah, we want to get out of here. Yeah. I can't. So what are you doing then between 9 and 11? I don't know. Okay. We're doing news. I guess. Huh? You can do news. Okay. Maybe we'll uh, put Rob out at uh, 10. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. I, I could, you know, if you can kill some time, I could also... Do the today's police reports later too, if you wanted to. Sure. Okay. Yeah. If you and Suter do, yeah. Well, you and Suter doing sports. Yeah. I'll put together police reports. Yeah. There you go. See, we got a plan. Well, now we don't have to rush to nine o'clock because we don't have the suit. Uh, yeah. You know, the Hawk Fanatic show. Yeah, and I'm not getting stuck in this building. No. With Pat stuck in this building. None of us are being. No, no. I don't think any <laughs> of us should be stuck in this building today. With Pat in this. With Pat in the building. <laughs> Uh, August 13th, 1043 p.m. at Highway 1 West and Highway 218. Minivan with Texas plates is parked on the overpass. Male urinating over the bridge. Oh, I'm sure the people on Highway 218 are very appreciative of that. Yeah. <laughs> Asia Janae McQuay. It's a cool name. Asia Steve. Yeah, Asia. 1108 North 8th Street in Burlington. I'm sure that uh, that uh, Bruce would like. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. enough of that. Yeah. Charges fifth degree criminal mischief at 100 East College Street. That's the Ped Mall. 1:03 a.m. On the above date and time, the defendant jumped on top of an Iowa City Police Department squad vehicle to dance and take a photograph. <laughs> the defendant caused damage to the hood, scratches, and why, dents. Why wouldn't you? The defendant was identified by security camera footage. The defendant was later stopped and provided a false name to officers. Then they took him to jail and said, you leave now. Because her name's Asia. Yeah. Also charged with providing false identity information. Stephen James Stampka. Hello. Her excuse was it was the heat of the moment. Oh, see. Stephen James Stampka, 2108 Western Road, Iowa City. Charged with first degree harassment, 328 South Clinton. At 11.55 p.m. On the above stated date and time, the defendant sent a text to his ex-girlfriend and the child's mother detailing several ways she would die and ways he wants to do it. For example, quote, What you did to me makes me want to slice you up into fat, fat, fat steaks and try cannibalism one time. I want to stone you after nailing you to a cross. This continues with several other detailed desires and ends with the text, if you see me around, you two better effing run. That's all I have to say. Officers met, attempted to make contact with the defendant, but they were unable. A warrant was requested for first to re-harass yeah. Fat, fat, fat steaks. August 17th, 1224 p.m., 201 South Clinton Street. That's at Hills Bank. Male sitting in a flower pot, pants with half... Male sitting in flower pot, pants half down. He is screaming at passersby. See, this was clearly written by a pessimist. Because <laughs> yeah. I like to think his pants are half up. You would think. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sitting in the flower. In pot. the planter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what he's planting there. His hey, pants half down. Hello. Uh, favorite rock band, Puddle of Mud. <laughs> he's back. Yeah, he's back. That's good. I don't know what Puddle of Mud had to do with a guy with his pants down. <laughs> well, he's sitting in a flower. But it was something different for him, and I want to give him yeah. credit for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
no Congress people were mentioned. No, he's shaking it up. He's yeah. Governors. <laughs> yeah. Non-political. It was a non-political call. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. August 17th, 1233 p.m. at 201 South Clinton, uh, Old Capital Town Center. Pants are down. White male, shorter side, sitting there, maybe intoxicated, slurring words a little. North side on Washington. I'm guessing this is the same guy from the planner. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, what is uh, Laredo on or Rawhide? What, what happened what? to Do you want him calling every two seconds? <laughs> I just. We just told you. Just told him don't keep calling for every one of them. Okay. I was worried about him. You have to make a decision, man. I was worried about him. Okay. August 17th, 1248 p.m. At Old Capital Town Center, 201 North Clinton, north side, bus stop entrance, male with his pants down and a bottle of vodka harassing people. There's your trifecta of calls. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hi, long-time listener, first-time caller. I want that previous gentleman reported to the FCACK for using a obscene language. I don't know what, where that was going. Yeah, I don't either. I don't really care. August 19th, 7.06 a.m. at 11.65 South Riverside Drive, Alexis Park Inn. Male with his pants around his ankles, crawling around on the ground. There's a lot of people with their pants down. That has taken the lead in calls. Yes, yes. It's past the threesomes and the axes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a competition. It is. Now, if I'd been paying attention, we could have put the public uh, exposure ones along with well, I guess people with their pants down are technically exposed. Well, yes. Yeah. Maybe the masturbating versus the pants down. Although, again, some of those might be the same. August 22nd, 601 E Avenue in Kelowna, 1122 AM. Reports a white male in a white van was waving an axe and screaming, not making sense. Officers were unable to find the subject. There's another one for the axe category. Yeah. August 23rd, 757 PM, 1445 Boyram Street, Burger King. White male in a wheelchair, weaving in and out of traffic, throwing stuff at cars. <laughs> He's in traffic. I'm going to point that out. In his wheelchair, throwing stuff. Yes. So he's got stuff Yes. with him in his wheelchair. Yeah, that he can throw. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's take this call. Hello. His favorite TV show, Spencer for Tire. That's good. August 23rd, 8.22 p.m. at 422 North Lynn Street, wife returned. That's it. Huh? I mean, did you take her back? Yeah. <laughs> or did she come back? I don't know. It just says wife returned. August 25th, 12.13 a.m. at 410 East Washington Street, the Iowa City Police Department. Black male, gray shirt in the patio area, having a conversation with a Red Bull can. Was also jumping up and down and talking to himself before the conversation. So the Red Bull can must have said something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, conversation with the inanimate objects is now rising up the charts. I like, yeah, like the guy yeah, talking to the, the pine, pine cone. cone. Yeah. yeah. What if the pine cone knows the Red Bull can? <laughs> And the jumping up and down before, because, you know, Red Bull does give you wings. I yeah, can see after. Right, but yeah. It's weird. August 26th, 945 a.m., 2352 Catskill Court. 16-year-old daughter being defiant. She wants her taken. <laughs> Get rid of her. Yeah. My 16-year-old is showing some defiance. <laughs> no parents ever handled that. No, nobody's ever had to, had to deal with that. No. No. August 26th, 2.01 p.m., Melrose Avenue and Highway 218. Complainant stopped to help a lady in a blue truck push her disabled truck. The lady ended up rolling it into the ditch down by a tree. <laughs> so you stopped to help her push it, and the lady rolled it down into the ditch. <laughs> yeah. I like the phrasing of that one. <laughs> I helped her push her car. Somehow she put it in the ditch. Yes, what is wrong with her? Yes. It's her fault. Obviously. August 27th, 3.12 p.m. at 1418 Franklin Street. Daughter has been missing since Monday morning. Last time she spoke to her, she said that she was in an accident in Chicago and was attempting to walk home. 
Now, I don't know what day of the week this was, but I assure you it was not Monday. No. Because no. that's probably why we put it in there. We probably waited like three days or something. Because people are terrible. August 28th, midnight, 1065 Manitou Trail. Burst of telepathic energy telling him something is happening at this address. Wow. Oh. It's like one of those psychics who solves crime. I know. It's exactly like that. Exactly like that. Diagnosis murder with Dick Van Dyke. Yes. Yeah. Prognosis negative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> I want to see sack lunch. <laughs> How'd they get in the sack? Did they get this? They shrunk? <laughs> Is it a big sack? Hey. Elaine had so many questions. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Don't want dog call again. <laughs> September 1st, 312 a.m. At 2401 Highway 6 East, the quarters, apartment 52-103. Broken foot from a vehicle is no longer under the vehicle. Oh, that's a good start. <laughs> yeah, at least you're not under the vehicle anymore. September 1st at 422 a.m., 328 South Clinton Street, Hilton Garden Inn. Black female was trying to get into the hotel, then was on all fours barking like a dog at people. <laughs> now the female's curled up with a blanket in front of the hotel. Aww. Just like a dog. She barks, and then she lays down. <laughs> just think she's a dog. I, I guess. <laughs> Stephen Paul Wright, 1636 Highway 6 Northwest in Oxford. Charged with OWI first offense, 1636 Highway 6 at 1123 p.m. A defendant was found passed out in his vehicle at the end of a driveway. The defendant stated that he had drove to the end of the driveway to watch the lightning. The defendant was, had impaired balance, kept fading off mid-sentence. During field sobriety tests, he got very sweaty before passing out and defecating. The defendant was transported by ambulance to the hospital to get checked out. Submitted to a PBT but refused testing. He was uh, left at the hospital with staff. Hello. Hello. Hey, dog. Hi, dog. I hate Alexa. You were just starting to talk about sacks, and then it okay. went to some other thing. <laughs> okay, <and> dog. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, dog. Yeah. I don't get it. Uh, it's, it's Alexa. Was there somebody named Alexa? No, it's a th it's a thing you uh, it's smart speaker. Yeah, I'm aware of what it is. Well, I don't think you are. I just don't know why. It's like if I got on here right now and I said, "Alexa, uh, play the Russian national anthem." Yeah, it'd be like that. Yeah, it'd be like that. Okay. That guy's name was Stephen Wright, by the way. That's my favorite part of that. Uh, yeah. Comedian. Yes, I <laughs> explain that. September fourth, four oh eight p.m. at one fifteen Highway One West, Palm Beach tanning. Black male won't leave. He's been in line for fifty. Complainant's been in line for fifteen minutes. Well, that black guy's going to be disappointed by the tanning place. Yeah, really. Why is that black guy in a tanning place? That's my question. September ninth, two twenty eight a.m. Five hundred one apartments at five hundred one Southgate. Allowed Lucifer or Satan to use his bike for fifteen to twenty minutes. He's been gone for an hour. Complaint wants to report this as theft. Well, you can't trust Satan to do anything. No, they took it to hell. The cops yeah. aren't going to go out there. That's out yeah. of their jurisdiction. Yeah. Although they will go to town campus. Yeah. Hello? Quit saying that. Alexa just tried doing that national damn anthem. <laughs> <laughs> Knock it off, knucklehead. I'm sorry. <laughs> what did you say? I said... Alexa, play the Russian national anthem. That's all you said. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see the issue. Yeah. What's the problem? <laughs> September 14th, 927 a.m. at Crandick Railroad in Iowa Avenue. Semi went under the railroad bridge and stripped off the top of the trailer. Larger freight liner box type truck, debris all over. Last seen going art building toward Art Building West. So a lot of people listen to that smart speakers that are really pissed. Oh, really pissed. <laughs> really pissed right now. I'm sorry. And they missed the, the call where the guy uh, <laughs> crashed into the bridge and kept going <laughs> with the, missing the top of his of his truck. Hello? 
Yeah, we all got stuck under a bridge. Okay. September 15th, 12.04 a.m., East Burlington and South Dodge Streets. Male walking around twitching. <laughs> Walked past the complainant's parking lot. Took three steps backward, then started running at the complainant's vehicle. <laughs> Wait, why did he get a running start? That's what I had to do in the snow today. I think we just put it in for the twitching. Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the rest of it was good, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I do like a good twitching. Twitching is probably yeah. Uh, enough. Yeah. Hayden Mahoney, 1111 North President Street in Wheaton, Illinois. Charged with assault causing bodily injury as well as interference with official acts, public intoxication, and possession of a fictitious license. 210 South Dubuque Street at 1.12 a.m. The defendant was removed from the sports column. The defendant punched bar staff in the face, causing pain and injury. He refused to listen to commands and pulled away from police. The defendant was taken to the ground and handcuffed. The defendant had bloodshot, watery eyes, slurred speech, confusion, smelled of ingested alcohol, admitted to being drunk, and defecated in his shorts. Ew. The defendant was in possession of a fictitious ID, PBT 0.195%. People pooping themselves is going high. Ah, yeah, that too. We have like a type for the Hall of Fame, I think. Uh, 9.47 p.m. on September 19th, 212 East Bloomington Street. Neighbor in the hallway saying, kill or be killed. <laughs> I'd kill him. I don't think any of my neighbors, my neighbor about writing me treats. Yeah. Oh. One of the neighbors baked and gave all the other neighbors like a little thing of cookies and stuff. Like oh, that's cool. Like a little plastic thing in front yeah. of the door. I'm uh, very thankful. Our neighbors had her uh, garbage can tipped over for the last uh, week and a half. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And she won't go out and reta- And I won't. I'm not. It's not your. Yeah, it's not your it's can. It's not my can. No. No. Wesley Allen Snow, 2035 9th Street in Coralville, Apartment 3, charged with public intoxication and unlawful possession of a prescription drug at his residence at 5.55 p.m. On the above date and time, officers located the defendant laying on the front stoop of 2035 9th Street. Defendant smelt of highly ingested alcohol, uh, smelt highly of ingested alcohol, had mumbled slurred speech, attempted to sit in the seated position, but physically could not do so. Located in the defendant's left front coat pocket was a yellow prescription pill bottle containing 58 blue clonzepam pills. The prescription belonged to a different subject than the defendant. Located at his feet of the defendant was a broken liquor bottle and an empty bottle of vodka. The defendant provided a PBT 0.248%. Due to the high level of intoxication with prescription meds, he was transported to the University of Iowa hospitals and clinics. And I don't see why that would have been on here. Why would I make that a Hall of Famer, Steve? I don't know. Oh, it's not that great. I used to go home and like read through them all night and get rid of the bad ones, but that just took too damn long. Then I got to go through them again the next day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we live with what we got. September 21st, 927 AM, 2949 Creighton Street. Ongoing loud dogs. Taunts pedestrians. Available by phone. Dogs, dogs are taunting people. The dogs are taunting pedestrians. And you can get a hold of them by phone. Yes. <laughs> I think they meant the complainant. Oh, yes. okay. It's fine. I'm trying to still find to figure out that one, the clonzepam. That is a drug I used to take for anxiety issues. Yeah. Are you anxious now? No. No, okay. I stopped drinking. Okay. <laughs> when I was drinking, I would... Um, Get anxious? Not good. Um, yeah, I would... Uh, no, when I was drinking, I would drink like um, a lot of uh, Red Bull and vodka and Red yeah. Bull and like Jaeger bombs and a lot, a lot of stuff that had like energy drinks, which ain't good for you. And it would just make me just like give me panic attacks. Ah. So, yeah, I don't drink energy, energy drinks, like slamming them all the time with alcohol. No, exactly. don't do that. Don't do that. No. Lesson learned. Public service from the station and the ad console. Thank you. Jerome Brooks, transient, charged with third-degree burglary, 620 Bowery Street at 6.05 a.m. Uh, officers were dispatched 620 Bowery for a report of a burglary. A resident had set up surveillance camera in the basement of the house next to a washing machine and dryer for laundry. On September 7th, the defendant was observed entering the basement and looking around. The defendant notices the laundry basket on top of the dryer and began rummaging through it. The defendant then removes several pair of women's underwear, smells them, and places them in his pocket. <laughs> the victims, who were present in the house during the burglary, reported having three pair of underwear and a T-shirt 
stolen. Uh, also charged with third-degree theft for a separate incident, this happening at 3, 245 East Iowa Avenue, defendant attempted to pass an obviously fake $100 bill in front of a police officer. Defendant was identified and arrested pursuant to a valid arrest warrant. During a search of the defendant incident to arrest, the officer located a proximity card belonging to the University of Iowa Parking Division provided to employees to access parking structures. Follow-up with the parking division and the staff member associated with the card revealed that it had been stolen in an automobile burglary hours prior to the defendant's arrest. The defendant claimed he had the card for a long time, but the defendant's never worked for a uni- the University of Iowa and reasonably should have known he had no right to possess that card. Uh, it is blowing up. A, it yeah. is. Yeah. September 23rd, 127 p.m. at 1700 South First Avenue, vocational rehabilitation. Male keeps standing in the doorway in the lobby area. Appears intoxicated and is talking about meth. Male in his 50s, bandana, back brace, wearing short shorts. <laughs> so now we know who wears short shorts. <laughs> yeah, the meth guy does. The meth guy wears short shorts. <laughs> Standing out in the hallway of, uh, where was he again? <laughs> Vocational rehabilitation. <laughs> yeah. They got a lot. Well, of- he is not taking, that's not taken to him at all. <laughs> no, they got a lot of work to do with He's this guy. A lot of rehabilitation. <laughs> Oh, where are we here? September 24th, 9.59 p.m. at 435 South Lynn Street. Rise at Riverfront Crossings. Hawk with a broken neck from falling out of a nest. A group of subjects are surrounding it. They'd like to help it out. Yeah. 11.09 p.m., 435 South Lynn. Up the stairs, maybe on the west side, up the side of the hill, female laying down with a hawk attached to her arm. Call the decline medical. She's t- she took the hawk herself. Yeah. Right. Learn it falcon. Be attached to, yeah, it's like, like falcon. Oh, like falconing, except it's not a falcon, it's a hawk. Yeah. Uh, this thing is so big, these police reports, that when I put them on the board, they're like moving, adjusting the levels and stuff. <laughs> Careful of that. This wouldn't affect the level going to the stream, would it? That's down there. Yeah, but I mean, if your level's low there, it's low. Well, energy. this is the one that says laptop feed was the one that was uh, down like uh, halfway. No. Okay, good. No. no. Not a big deal. September 25th, 158 p.m. at 1545 Aber Avenue. That's Baby Mommy Way. Three car accident. Everyone took off running. <laughs> well, that's more than the one that had two cars he, earlier. Yeah. Which was in the same location, by the way, Aber Avenue. I wonder if it's the same, one of them is the same driver. <laughs> it's have an accident. Just, leave just run. Car. Yeah, just run. <laughs> well... <laughs> Could have helped one person we know. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, Hi dog. dog. When I was drinking heavily, I used to have a hog attached to my arm. Three car actors. I like the background. Like It's like when Gavin would call. You hear something we did like two minutes ago. Uh, Alexa. Play this theme from South Pacific. <laughs> you're, you're targeting dog. <laughs> but it's but a- how many people? <laughs> <laughs> there is so much collateral damage right now around, <laughs> around the community. <laughs> Hello? September 30th, 8.51 p.m., 1111 Wild Green Road. It's wild, I tell you. Wild. Wild. Wanting a welfare check on a person who spits out his food. <laughs> he doesn't have to eat it if he doesn't want to. Yeah. 
can't force them. October 15th, 539 p.m., Studio 13, 13 South Lynn Street. Blackmail, bald, blue jacket, backpack, throwing bricks at buildings and at cars. He is not happy. No, where does he get the bricks? Oh, this is a multi-part one. Ah. Uh, 5.40 p.m. at 13 South Lynn Street, the Yacht Club. Black male wearing all black, gray hoodie, black backpack, seems to be in mental distress. 8.35 p.m. at Come and Go, 323 East Burlington. Male in the middle of the street, asking people to run him over. Black male, green backpack, walking in the parking lot toward the library. By the way, these calls are all like eight hours apart. Yeah. Uh, no, not eight hours, but like four hours apart. Now he made it with some Studio 13 over to the come and go? Yeah. He wants to be run over. <laughs> well, I would be, too, if he can't walk very fast, yeah. apparently. Throwing bricks around, that probably didn't help. Well, he's got to lug the bricks. It's yeah, that's probably easy. pretty heavy. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. October 20th, 11.04 a.m., North Dodge Street in East Jefferson. Male walking on the sidewalk in a furry, dressed in white, cussing and swearing. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. Kind of like a mascot costume on and swearing. Dudu Miyakanda Makunga. Dudu. Her old friend Dudu. <laughs> 3635 12th Avenue Southwest, Department N2 in Cedar Rapids. Charged with false application for a license or ID card. Well, yeah, I can't route Dudu on that. <laughs> the Iowa City Driver's License Station, 1700 South 1st Avenue, Apartment 6, 1 p.m. His name is Dudu. His name is Dudu Miyakanda Bakunga. Yeah, that's like uh, three, three long, really complicated names. Yes. I wonder. <laughs> I know. Maybe he is watching Grit. <laughs> oh, no, here we oh, go. There he is. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Tommy, what was that guy's name again? Dudu Miyakanda Makunga. That's the guy sitting in front of Pee Wee in the theater. Excellent. The Iowa DOT Bureau of Investigation Identity Protection alleges that Dudu Miyakanda Makunga used the false name, date of birth, social security card and number, and resident alien card of another to apply for and obtain a driver's license permit fraudulently and without entitlement to insurance. Dudu had this issued driver's license permit in his possession and also presented the fraudulent driver's license permit to law enforcement as his identity during a traffic stop. Dudu was observed in video and also... <laughs> See, they even call him by his first name just because it's Dudu. <laughs> they never call the person by their first name in the they, details. They wrote this for us. They usually do the last name, but damn it, he's not going to. <laughs> Thank you, Officer Ryan Dom of the Bureau of Investigation Identity Protection. <laughs> Dudu had his this issued driver's license permit in his possession and also presented the fraudulent driver's license permit to law enforcement as an identity during a traffic stop. Dudu was observed in video... <laughs> That line's great. And also made admissions <laughs> to the investigator regarding the crime. A photograph was taken of him during the issuance of the driver's license application of insurance. <laughs> that guy's one of my favorite Rolling Stones songs. <laughs> Heartbreaker. Yeah. Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> well, what about doo doo da da? Yeah, yeah. the police. Uh, all I, yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. October 29th, 1.50 p.m. at 10 South Clinton, the summit. Subject spraying fake mustard and is harassing people. Complaint got into an argument. States the subject assaulted her sister by spraying her with a fake mustard. This is outside of the bar. White male, black sweater, bright yellow mustard bottle. Complaint says it's a TikTok thing. Complaint wants them to talk to and told to stop it. She does not need to speak to an officer. Sounds to me like it's real mustard. What's fake mustard? Well, I think those costumes have a string that comes out of the top. Oh. Which wouldn't get on you, so why would you complain? Yeah. Why would you call yeah, the cops? Yeah. Unless he mixed up something that isn't mustard that just looks yellow, which I don't want to think about. That. October 30th, 438 p.m., 3661 Rochester Avenue, Iowa City Rehabilitation. Complaint advised she just needs to report that two males are swinging at each other in the lobby. They are no longer fighting. That's at the Iowa City Rehabs. Yeah. <laughs> two guys fighting. Well, they're healing. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I don't know how old they are, but. Uh, oh, wow. That's weird. I just saw one that could have been a Hall of Famer, but we never did put in a Hall of Fame. Just a guy peeing outside of Donnelly's, I guess. Not a big deal. Yeah. Uh, October 31st, 7.02 p.m. That is on Halloween night at Delwood Drive and Hollywood Boulevard. 
two guys standing on the lower corner of the intersection giving out candy to trick-or-treaters. Yeah, I usually do that from a house. Yeah, I, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. Just go to the corner of Hollywood and Delwood and just start handing out candy to kids. It's kind of oogie. Yeah, a little. November 2nd, 428 a.m. At Come and Go, that would be the location at, let me flip the page, 731 South Riverside Drive. Male in the bathroom going crazy, yelling and hitting things, not making a lot of sense. Was trying to hit his reflection a while ago. <laughs> He's got a call that got me on the Late Late Show with the Emoji News that time. Yeah, I like when people fight themselves. Yes, the reflections. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. But it's a poor reflection on them. Yeah. Ah, see what I did there. Yeah, it's a, actually a mirror on society. It is. Yeah. Favorite actress, Helen Mirren. Now this one isn't a Hall of Famer, but I think it needs to be read here. November third, five thirty-four p.m., eighteen oh four North Dodge. Blaine has a subject that has some mental health issues. Blaine is concerned he's acquired a large knife. He's got a knife? This guy, yeah. I didn't put it in the Hall of Fame, but I thought it was worth revisiting. Well, yeah, because this guy's got a knife. He's got a knife, Steve. Yeah, there is a knife. A, a knife, Suter. Say hey, what? A knife. He's got a knife. What he's got. Yeah. Knife. What is, yeah. Does the ghost have an Alexa? Did you screw that up, too? <laughs> yeah, he does. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because the plural is different from the singular. Yeah. So I can understand having trouble spelling that yeah. word. Yeah. I mean, maybe, really. Maybe yeah, the see, dogs yeah. had to go out. Or, really selling it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. See, that's why Suter's our sales manager. He sells like that. Yeah. Yeah, look, we'll, when we get ready to all go, right before we all go, we'll call Carew. Yeah. Or else if they came out right now. It'd be, yeah, it'd be blocked again in like an hour. Yeah. Hello? Hey, I and F. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. Just trying to get everything in. Hall of Fame show, you want everything. All the, you know. Yeah. Don't leave no stone unturned. Everything. All hands on deck. November 3rd, 542 p.m. At 639 South Lucas. Uh, 8 to 12... I don't know if that's people's ages or how many people keep getting access to the building. Complain has told them to leave and they stay out. Then they keep opening the door and yelling, we're back. <laughs> that's probably it's 12 years old, I would yeah. imagine. Yeah. Uh, November 5th, 1033 a.m. At three, 300 to 499 Butternut Lane. South corner of the U of I, uh, on the south corner, the U of I track team is using the hill for practice they stand in the road and leave their trash. Calling the police on the track team. What trash? It's a track team. The track team. I don't know. Well, they're not running with McDonald wrap. No, it's no. Anything. No. It's, it's a track. Yeah. Uh, Spiewax in the chat room. Hi, Rob. Hey, Rob. We don't have a heart out at nine anymore. Yeah. Hardy's not coming in. November 9th, 11.24 a.m. KCJJ, I was City. Maiden Lane and East Harrison Street. Black male, gray shirt under the bridge, yelling and screaming, this ain't Chicago. <laughs> and he has a sword. <laughs> Again, that's bearing the lead. Yeah. The sword might be more important than the yelling well, Chicago stuff. He's just got to point it out, even though he's got to, Most people in Chicago have a sword, evidently. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So. 11.13 p.m. I almost started doing bits about names of swords, and I realized I would reveal myself as a true nerd. I started naming types of swords. Like what? Yeah. Long sword. Yeah. Short sword. Yeah. Scimitar. Bastard sword. I think there's a bastard sword in a there. Bastard sword. I think. I think what, what about I, a son of a bitch sword? Probably yes. <laughs> An F and A hole sword. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I swear in Dungeons and Dragons there was something called a bastard sword, but I could be wrong about that. Dumb son of a bitch sword. Yeah. <laughs> Justin sucks sword. November thirteenth, seven thirty p.m. Thirteen Highway One West, Auto Zone. Female threatening to shoot up the store. Complained saying. This is AutoZone. 
Yeah, yeah. Why would you shoot up AutoZone? Yeah, you're not shooting up AutoZone. Yeah. November 15th, 5.12 p.m. at Highland Avenue and Boyram Street. Man laying in the roadway. Complain it's a passerby. Uh, another person is waving people around the subject. <laughs> you, know, you might want to render aid to him. Yeah. <laughs> not so much a road hazard as yeah. somebody who, who needs medical attention. Uh, November 17th, 8.08 p.m., 919 Highway 1 West at Walmart. Past employee who's had some mental health issues. He's currently gotten into a semi-truck, and he is not cooperating. I'll not be reading that text from Dog. November 20th, 5.45 p.m., Crosby Lane and Russell Drive. House on the corner of Crosby and Russell. Unknown race male. Black hoodie, gray pants, no weapons visible. Complaint advised they saw him tackle the mailbox of the house and sit in the driveway. Unknown if he's still out there. He really hated that mailbox. Yeah. Well, better offense than we had most of the year. Fair enough. The mailbox is more mobile than Petra's. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get a park, parting shot. Yeah, out there. Sorry. Fine. We're sorry. November 18th, 836 a.m., 215 East Washington Street in Washington. Reports a black male subject wanted a ride to the lighthouse. Now he won't get out of his vehicle, her vehicle. Request an officer, subject taken to the master's hand, they will assist him getting back to Des Moines. And we figured out that was like a homeless yeah. shelter kind of thing. Yeah. Because taking the black guy to a place called the Master's Hand seems that's, like it is not good. It's not good. No. no. I would argue that's probably just not a good name for the place in general. But it does end E-R and not A. <laughs> oh, it's Master's Hand? <laughs> no, it's Master's instead oh, okay. of Ma yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I know what you were alluding to, yeah. but I didn't want to. Yeah. November 23rd, 5.06 p.m., 200 East Park Road, City Park. Male is mirroring the complainant's movements in the playground area. <laughs> staring at the complainant and her kids. It's like a vibe. Yes. <laughs> or a cartoon when they like, uh, yeah. you guys dressed up as somebody else and then they meet yeah. in the doorway. Yeah. Like, da Donald D like Daffy Duck is dressed as Hitler yeah. and then Hitler shows up. <laughs> and they're in the doorway looking at each other. He's got a mimic as... Yeah. yeah. I totally get it. November 24th, 8.26 a.m., Sunset Street and Benton Street. Uh, white, blue, Heiler-type dog. You told me this last time we did this. Heiler-type? Heiler. Heiler-looking Heeler. Heeler. Uh, dog with black face running on sunset. Oh, oh that's... <laughs> Somebody... He should go to the master's hand. <laughs> so you better talk to that dog. Yeah. That's not right. No, it's not appropriate. No. In this community especially, no, we're not going to yeah, tolerate that. Yeah. We had somebody who said, don't do the later ones at the end. Go backwards because they're the ones we heard most recently. But these are holding up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> November 27th, 542 p.m. Yeah. at 610 Church Street. Homeless male came to the complainant's door asking for money. Then a shovel to whack him over the head. I wouldn't give him either. No. no. December 17th, 631 p.m. at 113 East Washington. That's a target. Intoxicated shoplifter peeing their pants. Well, he's arrested. What's he going to do? Yeah. Uh, December 19th, 158 p.m. at 2875 Commerce Drive, Hawkeye Convenience. Staff there unable to count change. Asked the complainant to go into the register and get his own change. <laughs> Male unable to operate the pumps. That ain't Did, good. I think they just, we had another call from there where they had to release yeah. somebody. I think that might have been yeah. it. Yeah. And finally, December 20th at 1035 Highway 1 West, Panda Express. People inside upset and throwing food. And that is your 2022 Hall of Fame class for the police reports. There you go. So you go into the community and, and do this stuff again next year. Yeah. Well, that was wonderful. Yeah. If you want to do sports with Suter, I can put together police report, like regular police reports. We will do that. Yeah. We will do that. Uh, we are going to take a break on YouTube. We'll be back in about four.